I had a hard week this week, and that's partly why I need that affirmation right there. And I, we'll, we'll get into a little bit why I had a hard week. I had a really hard meeting on, on Thursday of this week. And let me ask you, something came out of that meeting. A number of people were at that meeting that I didn't expect. Is there? Uh, and this is not to single anyone out, but I, I'm hoping that actually, did anybody from the city of Santa Fe come today? Anybody here from the city or county of Santa Fe? Any officials? You're with Santa Fe County? Are you, Esteban? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. He's faking. Um, and then I talked to somebody from the New Mexico Environment Department this week. Emily Green. Is any, Emily here or anybody from the Environment Department here? Nobody came from the Environment Department? Okay. Nobody here unofficial with the Buckman Director version or anything? Okay. Well, I know a lot of people here are carrying small arms, so if I get in any trouble and any of these officials are here and hiding out, I, I'm, I'm told that I'm protected. No, I, I hope not to insult anyone with what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about some really sensitive stuff. Um, this is about your drinking water, and this is about the risk that you may be taking with your drinking water. It's, it may not be a risk you signed up for or wanted to take. It may be a risk that was imposed on you by others. So we're going to talk a little about risk, and we're going to talk a little about water. And I'm going to, most of my talk about water is going to be with on the engineering side. I am a professional engineer. I'm licensed by the state of New Mexico. And as a licensed engineer, I signed up uh, under a certain code of ethics that said that if I saw any engineering that I believed to be substandard, and I believed that substandard engineering had an impact on the health, safety, and welfare of this community, I would do something about it. And that's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm doing here, and that's what this talk is about. So we'll talk about water in the context of engineering, and especially in the context of uh, engi uh, engineering risk. You know, risk is an engineering discipline. This, the study of reliability engineering and preventing failure is an engineering discipline, and engineers take this very seriously. You have to when you're in engineering school because the design of engineered systems is often critical to public safety. All of you are sitting very comfortably in this building. You recognize that the roof above you is heavy enough that if it fell on your head, you'd be in trouble. And none of you are actually worried that the roof is going to fall on your head, and why is that? Engineers. I'm hoping that an engineer did an appropriate stress calculation on that and that it's all fine. Now. Now everybody's looking at the roof, and I've lost everyone's attention. It's okay. If we had two feet of snow last night, I might have looked it up and been more concerned about it. But by and large, systems that affect public health, safety, and welfare are engineered, and they're engineered for reliability, and they're engineered for safety. And part of that safety analysis is a risk analysis, and part of that risk analysis is a failure analysis. And part of that failure analysis is a probability analysis. Because it's never a hundred, you're never 100% safe, you're always at some risk, right? But what you're trying to do is you're trying to minimize the probability that something bad is going to happen to you. So the science of risk engineering and reliability engineering is, is a mathematical discipline, first of all. And uh, there was a time when mathematicians and statisticians were much more highly revered. You know, my father had a PhD in mathematical statistics. And what did he do for a living? He was hired by the federal government to do telecommunications policy. Why was the federal government hiring mathematical statisticians, PhDs no less, to do telecommunications possible policy? Because what they used to do back then, and this is, you know, look at your public regulation commission and decide whether things have changed or not. What they used to do back then is analyze a slate of policy options, and mathematicians and statisticians would determine which policy would provide the greatest benefit to the most people. And to do that, you had to look at multivariate density functions. You actually had to look at these various options and determine which ones would translate into the most benefit to people. <coughs> what are the qualifications to be a utility regulator now? Are they different? Slightly different. High school? You have to have a last name. You have to have, <laughs> you have, to have a particular, a couple of particular last names would really help. If it's King or Block or Sanchez, you got a great shot. Um, that was kind of a snide comment, and all of you took it very well, so I guess I can go further down that road. But let's talk about failures for a little bit. I have always been fascinated by failures. And in engineering failures, there is often accompanying the failure... I don't want to say a cover-up, but perhaps less than, you know, a forthcoming truth about the failure. And you've seen this over and over. I don't know about the earliest failures. Did you all see the Tacoma Narrows Bridge? 
that, that oscillated for 30 minutes before it fell. You know, a lot of the workers knew that that bridge had an, what was called an aeroelastic problem. You know, it would flutter in the wind. And a lot of the workers knew it, but they went ahead and opened the bridge anyway. Nobody actually died when that fell. But years later, we had the Hyatt Regency walkway collapse, and plenty of people knew that the design change they made on that, where the upper level pancaked on the lower level and took both the walkways down. And then much more recently, I, in fact, I came in here and gave a talk on the Deepwater Horizon. It was that over a year ago. Boy, a lot of people knew that there were problems before that failure. All the workers on that rig, which were the most experienced oil drill drillers and well riggers in the world, were texting home to their families, boy, we've never seen a well quite like this. This one's dangerous. And they were actually popping champagne corks when that rig blew. It's sunk on Earth Day, by the way, 2010. You remember that? It's sunk on Earth Day. And then there was the, you know, it toward the other extreme with the not being so forthcoming. BP had invented a technology for um, estimating flow rates coming out of uh, open pipes that were spewing toxins underwater, and they, they, they developed a video technique so you could study a video and say how much fluid was coming out of the pipe, and they estimated that a, what, what was the original estimate on the, the leakage from the deep water horizon? A thousand barrels a day. It must be a thousand barrels a day. It turned out to be 50-some thousand barrels a day. So again, not so forthcoming. And then the more recent one, Fukushima Daiichi. You know, certainly a lot of people knew that that nuclear power plant on the ocean with the backup diesel generators between the plant and the ocean and their fuel tanks, you know, even closer to the ocean, a lot of people knew that a tsunami coming in would wipe out the backup power systems and lead to these multiple meltdowns that actually happened. So in every time there's an engineering failure, there are a couple things involved. The great engineering failures often involve, you know, not being so forthcoming with information. But more importantly for this discussion, every great engineering failure, and I'm talking about intended, unintended failures, because a lot of stuff in engineering is designed to fail now. You know this, right? Designed obsolescence. But in every great engineering failure that was unintended, the failure was preceded by someone or many people, engineers particularly, usually, under predicting risk. So the prediction of risk is incredibly critical. The ability to have this mathematical probability knowledge and know how to look at a set of possible failure scenarios and decide which of those has what probability of occurring. Risk is not just the probability scenario. That's part of it. The other side of it is the consequence. So you have the probability of failure and how great is the consequence. I think there's a low probability the ceiling will fall. The consequence would be high because I love all of you. We don't, we don't need a ceiling falling on us. But in every risk analysis you're doing, you're looking at the probability of failure and you're looking at the consequence of failure.